So, hi. After that lovely introduction, I don't, I, I can sort of skip my not really thoroughly worded, but mostly thought out introduction of myself. Um, but I'll go over the highlights. Tor, I was here for six years. I started at the end of seventh grade, and I actually chose to stay a year longer than normal uh, for basically the reason that I wasn't done here. There was more for me than I needed to get, and I got it. I am a happier person than almost anyone around me, and Fairhaven is responsible for that. And um, when I arrived, I was a thoroughly miserable person, and Fairhaven cured me. So I, I cannot stress enough how much Fairhaven has meant to me over the course of my life, and will continue to mean for the rest of my life. I, during my time here, had a rather checkered beginning in terms of my judicial record. Um, I, I was suspended, I was threatened with expulsion, and I was barred from entering any room with a door for a two month period. <laughs> All of which I turned around during my last two years here. I was the law clerk for one full year and I was JC, JC chair and school meeting chair for almost one entire academic year each because the impact of being involved in one's own judicial proceedings came home, really became apparent to me, really struck home. After graduating, I got a bachelor's degree in philosophy. I got married. I had a child who was now two and a half, and I moved to Canada. Any of which I'm happy to go into further detail on if you care. <laughs> but I... My name's Erin. Um, I went to school here for six years. Um, before going to school here, I did go to a public school. It was rather tortured experience um, and from that my mother and I seeked out um, a different way for me to learn um, and I we found Fairhaven um, an amazing experience it's definitely the best decision that my parents ever made for me um, I spent a lot of time in the art room I spent a lot of time barefoot and running around in the woods um, and really experiencing life for what it was um, and really making mistakes and falling on my face and learning things and, and really being given those opportunities. My passion at that time was training horses um, and Fairhaven gave me the ability to go to these farms and train horses and really pursue my passion. Um, and from that I just learned such responsibility for myself and for the things that I was doing around me. After that, after leaving school, I guess, I uh, started a career right now. I work for Whole Foods Market. Top 100 com companies in the country. Uh, I'm a team leader for our specialty department. I am the young youngest team leader in our region. I feel like my experience here in Fairhaven gave me that drive to be able to um, go above and beyond in ways that people that are older than me haven't been able to. I'm Alice. I graduated here in 2008 after being here for <coughs> six years with a four-year gap in the middle. So basically, I was here for part of elementary school and all of high school. We're going to divide it up that way. I guess my clearest memories of Fairhaven have to be of the Judicial Committee. Um, no, that sounds really bad, but <laughs> <laughs> I was clerk a lot, is what I'm trying to say here. Um, I, before I was old enough that I had the, the clear and concise writing skills to clerk the meeting, I was always volunteering for the sub. You know, when someone said, oh, I be here today, I would take their place as often as possible, I would still do that if they'd met me. Um, and I was I was judicial committee clerk. Good I really enjoyed this environment because there were so many more people for me to interact with, especially the ones who when I was younger were older than me because I could then learn what they knew and, and pick up on their passions and learn about that. So now I go to the University of Maryland College Park. Um, I'm majoring in theater with a focus in production and design. Uh, I graduate this May. At Fairhaven, the, the presence of the younger kids was something that I benefited from, and maybe in a fit of egotism, I think they benefited from spectacularly. Being able to be around older students, myself, a student named uh, Gabriel, who is older than me by a couple of years, I think was very gently and carefully teaching a six-year-old, I think, maybe seven-year-old student um, about making soup. 
and he's he's cutting cheese for some reason, and, and he's actually holding the knife and doing all the control, but he's letting this other student stand on a stool in front of him and watch everything carefully. And that's the kind of thing that you need an age-mixing environment to do. Now, you can do that at home, after school, with your parents, yes. But having people who know that small children exist and how to deal with them is really a benefit. When I started here, um, I was 10 or 11 years old, and I had a herd of five-year-old girls <laughs> that, <laughs> that were my munchkins. And, uh, we played together and built fairy houses and painted and ran through the woods and fought with boys and and it was wonderful and then going from from hurting these people um, into what I'm doing now and running uh, a team of 20 people it's really taught me um, how to deal with people and how to get people where you want to go. There's a student here who until I think the age of 11 or 12 maybe 13 couldn't read and then he decided he needed to read and it took him three weeks from I can't read to I can read as well as a normal 13 year old. Three weeks because he wanted to. The level of bureaucracy we can achieve here can be almost gratuitous at times. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you have to go through the computer court. They only meet Wednesdays at 11 so they can get to school meeting in time. So, but you have to put it on the agenda before that in order to. So, there is, so it has to be by Monday at 10.35 in the morning before you can try. <laughs> and, and so, that there is structure, and you have to work within the structure to change the structure. I feel like I, I did pretty well. Um, there were a couple of moments where I sort of had to ask myself, you know, am I, am I really going to be able to do this the same as everybody else? They've all been writing papers you know, every week since they were, I don't know, 10 or something. Whereas I had taken one community college English class and written my thesis here. And as far as academic writing goes, that was pretty much it. But I did fine. It took me longer to do the assignments in my first semester, I would say, than everybody else. Not like turning them in late, but like more of my time was spent on academics. But I didn't really mind that because I wasn't sick of it already. That makes sense. I was never afraid to raise my hand to ask a question, or even to answer a question, which I never realized maybe Fairhaven was like a thing that people weren't willing to do. Was, you know, the teacher says, and this here on the board, who knows what the answer is? Crickets, crickets, crickets. <laughs> yes, Alice, you again. <laughs> but I also was very comfortable going to people in positions of authority, you know, teachers or in, in, in very of staff members, and just saying, here's something that I'm having trouble with, that I think you can help me with. Please help me. And every teacher I went to, if I had an issue like that, I'd say, you know, this is the thing. I didn't go to normal high school, so I don't have that background. Help me work this out so I can be the student that you need me to be here. And they would love that I was getting involved in that.